All right, so here we are. We are back. Hey, I took one day off. In honor of all the YouTubers who do the daily videos, they had leap year this year. So yesterday being leap day, they had to do what will be one of their 366 videos. Some of them do it more than a video a day. So shout out to all those people. I took the day off in honor of them. You know, I figured the internet does not need yet another fish video. And this is mostly a fish video, I'll say. I might sneak in a little bit about, I don't know, Richard Lewis. We'll start with Richard Lewis dying. It's unfortunate they're coming up on the season finale of um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, one of the original cast members, one of my favorite parts of the show, him and Larry throughout the years, and then even going all the way back to some of his early stand-up. I remember being very young and liking his stand-up, and then for, I don't know, 15, 20 years, he was like gone. I didn't know. I didn't even know he still existed. Maybe an appearance or two on Stern or something. And then he was back on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and yeah, that seemed like the beginning of that show was 15 or 20 years ago now. Where does time go? And you know what's weird? In all this time, I don't know how many days I've lived now. You know, I'm not like fish. I don't have a song like Grind where I calculate how many days I've been alive. But most days, it's safe to say, I have completely forgotten. And then every now and then, there's like one random day that really wasn't that special. But uh, something happened, and I just remember it real clearly. Like recently, I remember, I don't know why. And I, I know the year. Normally, I can't pinpoint a year. But this one, I can pinpoint the day and year. And again, I don't even really necessarily know why. Um, I mean, it was a big part of my childhood, I guess, for a few years there. But for on Easter morning, 1990, my mom got me a, a couple of packs of basketball cards in my Easter basket. And, uh, you know, candy and some eggs, whatever else you get in an Easter basket. And uh, I was like, basketball cards? I didn't know they existed. You know, my brother collected baseball cards. I had had some baseball cards at that point. Maybe I would, like, run up to the stop and go is what we had at that time and uh, get some baseball cards. I like the Cincinnati Reds, you know, whatever. And I just did not know. And I liked basketball. I liked the NBA. I loved college basketball, even, like, at a young age. But I did not know that uh, basketball cards even existed. And I could like still picture, I remember my bedroom, I was in bed, I know, you know, I don't know. There's like so many Christmases I probably don't really remember. I don't know what it was about. And there's probably, you know, a dozen or 50 days like that or something. Like every now and then something will come up and I'll be like, oh, you know, this one thing I remember. Now, usually it's not that specific to that day. Um, and I have no other examples right now, but I imagine most people are like that or you just, I don't know. Some people probably have amazing memories, and they're like, dude, I remember thousands of days. You remember 50? Yeah, I remember about 50 days. You know, amongst others, I'm sure. Sometimes if I'm looking at pictures, I'll be like, oh, yeah, it'll, you know, get the memory working up a little bit, and um, something like that. I see a picture in my mom's house that I see once a year, a memory that may have faded, but yet, not once a year. I go to my mom's more than once a year, but you know what I'm saying. Whenever I go to my mom's, I see that picture, so it's constantly being refreshed. So I don't know, I just, uh, I don't know how that came up. And then uh, also, I'm on the heels of Richard Lewis, I wanted to mention uh, Antelope Greg, infamous fish fan. I never met him, I saw him at shows before. I was at Deer Creek in 03 when he got a shout out from Trey, he was not there. Many fans speculated that maybe he was in jail, maybe he was in rehab, maybe he's having health problems. And uh, all these years later now, in 2024, Antelope Greg has passed away. Now, most people I met that met him, you know, they, they were a little annoyed by him. You know, if he if that's not your thing, getting down there on the rail and just going crazy during shows, uh, you were probably annoyed by those people. And he's not the only one. You know, there's a few of them now. And I think most of us are just a little annoyed by them. You know, nothing, there's, there's not really a hurting, eh, maybe in some cases they're hurting people's nights, I guess. I don't know. They're, they're mostly harmless, just a little annoying, you know, that's all. And um, so he will be missed, I guess, but not really by some, I suppose. You know, I'm not going to say, I don't have anything bad to say about him. I never even met him, you know. Most people I've met didn't have anything great to say, but then a lot of it was just, you know, myth and legend. They probably never even met him, you know. I don't know. <laughs> So then, um, yeah, then that, for some reason, I'm going to springboard from the death of Antelope Greg, which was, uh, it's a tragedy, I guess, I hope. I hope everything, you know, I don't know, his family's okay and all that. I don't have any, I don't have a gauge on how old he was either, you know. Sometimes that makes it more tragic, I suppose. You know, if he was 45, you know, that's about the minimum I'm going to put him, I suppose, around 45. You know, I know that. He was at shows pre-03, you know, so that ages him at a certain point. He certainly wasn't 30. 
you know, some of you young 4.0ers, I'm sorry, 3.0ers, I mean 3.5ers, I don't know what this is anymore. There does need to be some distinction, but really, 4.0 is a bunch of hogwash. But 3.0 is, is so long now, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. People that, that, that like became new fans in 2010 and 11, they don't want to be compared to some chomper that showed up in 21. You're all 3.0 or sorry. And me, I don't consider myself a 1.0-er, although technically I should. Because I did go to some shows in 1.0, played some video games, listened to them, smoked some pot in high school, listened to them. But I wasn't really a fan until technically 2.0. During the hiatus, somehow I became a fan. That first Bonnaroo that Trey headlined, somewhere in that era, somewhere in that time, I became a fan. And then, you know, I was just chomping at the bit until they, uh, until the return. And then the retirement. Talk about a buzzkill, you know, all fired up, waiting a year or two to see them live. I go and see them live a bunch in 03, and then they close the door on us, temporarily, really. Hell oh, yeah, and I've had a calendar from 2006. I have no idea. Speaking of things I don't remember, I do not remember buying this calendar. Never even opened it, too. Still has got the plastic, or I opened it from, you know, dry goods, but I did not uh, ever take it out of the plastic wrap and, like, hang it up. You know, it was interesting fish that was just like uh, out of, not out of focus, but they were like a uh, silhouette or dark, you know, they were, uh, I don't know what you call that imaging. Somebody out there picked me up. Jay LaRocca, if you're watching, what is that when they're like all black, you know, like the, the color, I don't know. There's like the light and uh, you know what I mean? It kind of looked like silhouettes, but they weren't silhouettes. But I thought that was interesting. You know, I don't even know if that hit me back then, 2006 being a dark year in many ways for the band. Um, So that's kind of cool. I like that. I like that I never opened it. I mean, it's not like sports memorabilia, which, you know, most of, most of that's worthless as well. I don't know if people collect fish. I see some people selling some old Grateful Dead stuff every now and then, though. Not that I'm looking to sell it or anything. If anything, I'd do some kind of giveaway. I know that's the thing YouTubers like to do, these giveaways. I would, uh, I don't know what I would do, though, exactly, or how I would do that, or why. I, then I would feel be like, if some, what if some person, they're like, I don't even really, you know, I'm like, they're like a new subscriber, and they never comment. They don't even really like me. What if that person won the giveaway, you know? But I only have one calendar. So then it would be hard to choose a fan, you know? And it's a 2006 calendar, so it's not going to do you much good. Although, you know, I think I had a 2003 calendar, and I also used it in 04. I just took a Sharpie to it, you know, and changed every day. Just made it work for 2004. It's pretty great. It's a recycled calendar. And then I did listen to the Grand, some of the Grand Rapids show from 98. Um, them going, and oddly enough, they played Grand Rapids two years in a row on November 11th. Or maybe it was 96 and 98, actually. It was 96 and 98. 98 being the really strong show. It's a show, there's a few points in this show, the gumbo, maybe it was the ghost also, where you felt like if you like fall of 97 and you like winter of 99, like a lot of people do, I do, um, I'm a lot of, how many people are you, F Zappa 20, how many people are you, that's a Mike Gordon song they don't play much anymore, although I don't know if people love that song or not, I, lo I like all this, this these uh, second half of their career Mike songs really, most of them anyhow, there's that back in the bubble. Maybe he's still being punished for back in the bubble. I don't know. That was a pretty bad song. Woody Howe, uh, the highlights, the gumbo, the Haley's Comet. Haley's Comet's really good. One of the better Haley's they've ever uh, laid down live. I had a really hard part, but then had a little bit of that. 97 funk, 99, like, what is this new era of fish? Trey's got all kinds of gadgets. Um, delaying and looping and farting. or uh, That was like, usually fishman farting. Luckily, his butt's not mic'd, but you, you sometimes could hear it if it was real thunderous. Theme from the bottom was good that night punch you in the eye opened it uh really you know i sometimes forget how good that song is you know it's another one we don't get a lot of it was a good limb by limb pretty much everything i heard was really good they played walk away in the second set and then those days that was a sign hey man we are on fire pay attention so i think it about covers it you know i uh i probably should check out the rest of that 98 show the um it wasn't just the haley's the haley's the ghost and um Gumbo were probably probably going to be the highlights of the show. Theme from the bottom and limb by limb. Maybe if you're into if you're not so into the uh, the jams that go on, but we we'll, you know what are you doing? You're you're here almost ten minutes into this video. And you don't really like the jams and fish. 
You never know. All right, we might talk some flyers later tonight, too. The flyers are on tonight, you know. That way when the tournament starts and I jump on the bandwagon, I can act like I've been here all along, you know. They're ranked number 21 right now. Got a tough game tonight, though, um, on the road. We'll see. It's on ESPN Plus, ESPN 2, if you happen to catch this before 9 p.m. Uh, so I don't get a chance to watch them often. So it'll be cool. See how they're doing. So check out this Holmes guy. I've seen a few games this year. I'm not, a to I'm not, a I'm not just totally jumping on the bandwagon. Although, really, you know, if they were unranked and, you know, had 11 losses, I probably wouldn't be watching tonight. That gives me and my dad something to talk about, too. You know, he's like me. He kind of just knows a few specific teams. He doesn't know much about college basketball overall, but he does know about the Flyers. That's kind of how I am. He knows more about them than I do. I probably know maybe more about the Browns than he does. He knows more about the Reds. I know more about the Buckeyes football. I don't know. So we kind of fill each other in. Lately, I've been hitting him with Nolan Ryan stats for some reason. Anytime we talk on the phone, I give him a new crazy Nolan Ryan stat. The most recent one was, this is a game way back when he pitched for the Angels. He pitched 12 innings, struck out 15, and walked 10 batters. So, <laughs> so you know, he just the, the, the crazy stat lines and overall stats on Nolan Ryan really never end. You know, it's unbelievable. I still think, although I saw him throwing out, he's, it's fine, he's finally lost it. I remember one time he threw out a first pitch at like 50 years old, and it was some heat. You know, he looked like he could still strike some dudes out. But then somewhere around 65, he threw out a first pitch, and it didn't go real well. He looked like he couldn't get out a little eager at that point, sadly. So the arm did finally, get, it wore out on him. Maybe one of the best spokespersons ever was 1990 Nolan Ryan doing Advil commercials. Like, I really believed in Advil. I'm like, man, if Nolan Ryan can do what he does and just pops a couple Advil after the game and a few days later he's ready to go, that Advil must be good stuff. I was big into Advil when I was a cross-country runner. You know, early in the season, you'd be sore. You know, I didn't work real hard in the summertime, especially once I got a driver's license. So those first few weeks of cross-country, man, it'd be some sore muscles. Advil. My coach at the time was a physical therapist, and he was real big into Advil and recommended a little too much Advil now that I'm older and I know a little bit about Advil. I mean, this guy was like, yeah, you could take uh, three Advil four times a day. That's a little obsessive, you know, for, come on. Come on, coach. All right, guys, boom, we're out of here. I had to look him up on Facebook and be like, dude, what was, all, what was up with all the Advil you were telling us to take there, coach? It did help. Spaghetti, too. Pig out on spaghetti. Great. That's real smart. <laughs> I don't know. Carbs, man. Carbs. Boom. We're out of here. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I don't know. What did I say? Okay. Richard Lewis is going to be missed. Lope G is going to be missed. Shout out to all the Leap Dares. Just oddball weird days, I remember. I won't remember this one, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, Grand Rapids 98. Very It's an official live fish release as well, too. You know. Our boy Ace Davely's uploaded the Haley's here on YouTube, if that's all you got time for. So that's pretty cool. Haley's Comet, 1998, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Boom, we are out of here. Stavely, man, that's a good that's a good fish fan. I'll uh, check out. What is it? Ace Stavely something or other? I don't know. You've probably you've heard him before, probably. If you're looking up just whatever, some random fish show. Oh, we also just recently passed uh, February 28th, today being March 1st, 2003. 21 years ago doesn't seem like that big a deal. Although I think for a while, like every year on the 28th of February, I wanted to uh, do a recap of that Nassau show. I think I officially got one on the channel. If you want to go back and check that out, maybe I'll even put it down low in the description below the video. All right, guys. Well, boom. I think this is the second time I've tried to leave. This time I mean it. Thank you. Boom. We are out of here. Just a couple double fists. You got double fisted. Sorry. It's inappropriate.